So today I'm going to actually talk about how we get to that AIS data and bring it in. Um, you might see some of the similar analysis that Orange just showed, uh, just using uh, analytics for IoT, uh, GeoEvent, and Pro. So how to subscribe to AIS from a data provider, do some analytics on the fly, and be able to store that and do analytics on the stored data. Uh, Oren also mentioned the importance of living Atlas layers. So RJS integrates all these different types of layers. So EEZ data, um, maritime exclusion areas for fisheries, uh, as well as chart information. Um, there could be suitability analysis that someone's corrected. So this data that we're bringing in through you know, AIS could be explained by this other data that's out there. So that's, I'm gonna really see that in a few of these demos here. So Jack showed this uh, slide earlier, uh, really focusing on uh, real-time analytics. So uh, working with tracking and monitoring and alerting if something goes wrong. So some of the products on the back end will be Geo Event Server and Geo Analytics, as well as a, a new product offering called Analytics for IoT, uh, which is an RTS Online offering. So here's a brief slide about a conceptual AIS workflow with RTS. So I work a lot with uh, defense clients, such as the Coast Guard, NATO, and Navy. And uh, sometimes they need to provide um, AIS from a provider called Spire. So what Spire does is uh, they have a constellation of satellites, ships uh, broadcast their signal through satellites to them or a terrestrial receiver. Spire, I'm consuming the Spire API and through uh, RTS Geo Event Server or Analytics for IoT. And I'm running some analytics on the fly. This could be a geo fence where, hey, a ship of this type going into this area that's send an alert, let's get an email, something like that. Maybe I'm storing that information in the spatio-temporal big data store as a mechanism we have to store large amounts of data. So I have some clients that want years of AIS data or months. Uh, it's an ability way to store that and bring it into the browser really quickly to see where uh, large amounts of you know, vessels may be in interacting. And once that's data stored, we can start running analytics on the fly, such as, or on this batch data rather, uh, such as joins, like those transshipments, um, tracks, uh, dwell locations, that sort of thing. Um, Spire also has an add-in through our marketplace. Uh, if you have a subscription, you can bring in some of their AIS data as well um, through, and then use some of the Geoanalytics desktop tools, which I'll show at the end. Uh, another provider is uh, Hawkeye 360. So what if a ship is not broadca broadcasting AIS? Um, they have a, an offering which allows us to pick up RF signals, so radio frequency signals. So when a ship has a, it's radar on or is talking on radio, it's able to pick it up. And they have been using it to uh, protect wildlife, you know, with individuals talking on radios when a satellite goes over to be able to see those signals. So here's in the bottom left here, um, you'll have some ships here and you have some of these red ellipses. These are those ships talking on radio together. So I had to brief myself on everybody on satellite frequency bands, my electromagnetic knowledge on a different part of the spectrum, but on imagery. But so I'm gonna see some examples of uh, VLF and LF. So X band um, and L band, these are basically the radi radar of the ships, uh, you know, navigation systems and VHF is them talking on radios. So Hawkeye is a provider that provides that data. So I'll briefly show some dashboards, which are operations dashboard is our main way to kind of communicate live data. This is actually one of my colleagues uh, dashboards he created really focused on two main shipping uh, organizations. This can be done very quickly with filtering to do sh um, the fleets of shipping, which I'll show you an example of next. So what, what really evident I like about this is that um, you sort of have a pattern of life between these two shipping companies. So I understand that Marisk really goes from point A to point B in the Southern hemisphere and OOCL really focuses on uh, around China as well as Australia as well. And we can be able to click on a ship and it's gonna filter out just that ship. So this is the last three weeks and get an understanding of the pattern of life of uh, different, uh, a different ship. And this dashboard is totally configurable. Uh, just fig configure these lists based off of uh, these two shipping um, uh, companies. And very quickly, I created this one when I found out I was gonna be supporting this meeting. So this is the last three days of all the shipping. So it's a different pattern of life. You'll see a lot of uh, ships will be in the EEZ and you'll see a lot of ships hovering around doing, uh, going back and forth, uh, race tracking to do, you know, fishing as well. So as we zoom in, I, I actually uh, color coded these by flags. You can see that um, the different flags are uh, represented here by, uh, in, in different easy. Sorry, it's take a little time to show up here. So you have some of the Norwegians here in this red with the blue and the Norwegian EZ focused on a little bit on the uh, EZ of uh, Great Britain here. 
and Great Britain and the dark blue are really just kind of focused on there. Um, so really interesting patterns of movement between different countries and different fleets. Uh, there's this area off of Peru that had a lot of transshipments, so I picked this area uh, as well as what Orden, Orden showed in his analysis. This is right off the coast of Peru. Um, there's a diff few different countries here, so China's in this uh, red and uh, yellow, Japan is in this red and white, and then Spain is actually in this yellow and red. So here's a just um, a pattern of fishing going back and forth and uh, coming really close together where if there's a refrigerated uh, vessel there, you can, that'll be uh, dwelling that the ship's transferring off their, their catch to this refrigerated vessel. And here's another dashboard, very similar. This one was created to uh, wildlife smuggling out of Maputo. Um, it was to support uh, a client that wanted to know all the ships that are in, entering and leaving this area of interest. So again, I'm just connecting to that Spire feed. I am just put a geo fence around this EZ and I'm getting some alerts when they've started. So what happens is they enter, they actually send me an email and I get a notification of where this vessel's at and we just enter the EZ here. And keeps track of how long they've spent. Some of these have been in a very long time. They're just fishing and trawling. And um, I get an alert when they, uh, when they leave the AOI. So just keep tabs on uh, movement patterns around this EEZ as well. Now focusing on from real time, getting real time analytics to more storing of the data and being able to see a lot of that data really quickly. Uh, this is about 30 million records, about five days worth of uh, data I've accumulated from Spire. Um, you can see some of the hot spots being uh, large amounts of counts. So Port of Rotterdam, Shanghai, uh, Dubai, Singapore, and then we zoom in, it's gonna update based off of uh, that, uh, that area. So now we'll have a different count for uh, Mumbai, uh, the Gulf of Aden. And then once I start getting in closer, some other layers appear, which I'll show an example of uh, um, Hawkeye in a minute. Um, so we'll, we'll filter this by time as well. So as we go by time, we can uh, see a sampling of the data as um, you know, we go back and forth here. Um, yeah, so once it gets down to a certain amount, it, it turns over to these, these um, triangles. So you can kind of see uh, once it gets to a certain amount, it goes from triangles to polygons as well. And those are the circles are under their current position or last reported position. And uh, these are all ships broadcasting their AIS, but sometimes ships don't do that um, or ships are talking on other signals. So we'll go an example here. Um, here's an example of a ship that came off on VHF really quickly here. I'll just go to the correct time. And this is Hawkeye really focuses on kind of understanding um, that there's been something there um, if it's not an AIS. So using, so these red icons here are uh, ships that are communicating together. So sometimes you'll appear where there's no AIS around. So there'll be a position here where there's no ship can correspond with that. That usually means, hey, no one's broadcasting their AIS. That's, that's of interest. So. Um, it's important to have different sorts of data, whether the, you know, the Spire AIS, the Hawkeye AIS, and then finding out what's in that area. Is it a good fishing ground? Is there uh, a port facility there? Is an oil terminal? Uh, so that'll explain uh, why that. So you can run this analysis on different, um, you're just viewing what ships have uh, communicated, uh, squawking their position, as well as uh, positioning information. Here's another cluster of interest right here where a ship got picked up on uh, its radar as well. It's, um, communicating via VHS, but I have no uh, AIS position to correspond with that. So that could mean um, some illicit uh, movement of transshipment or phishing. I'm gonna go and finally and just talk about some analytics here. So here's really quickly, I was gonna do some, you know, kind of transshipping or phishing pattern analysis. This is uh, what we call analytics for IoT. Um, so I'm pulling that Spire data and what I'm doing, I'm running an, an analytic called Calculate Journeys. And what this does is basically uh, calculate points and lines and create a line from it. And you know, if it's past this distance tolerance, it'll it'll separate as a new line. But I'm also giving you know standard deviations of uh, you know moving in course. So thinking that if I'm a ship and I'm just going from point A to point B, I'm not going to deviate course. But if I'm a fishing vessel. I'm going to deviate course and speed uh, quite drastically. So we could pick out the ones that are fishing versus the ones that are transiting very quickly. Dwell locations. So vessels that don't move an area in a certain amount of time. Um, these could be those refrigerated vessels for transshipment and then point clusters. So similar to Oren's analysis, you can pick like uh, a number of reports from a certain area and find out that they, hey, this is a cluster of ships going here at that certain time. 
and see if that corresponds with how the phishing suitability should be. So it could be, you know, something, you know, for defense and intelligence, could be some trying to trans shipping that way, or it could be just illegal shipping as well. So we'll go ahead over that, we'll zoom over to that bookmark. Turn on some layers here. And turn off some of this AIS. So I just picked this area here. Um, and then what we're seeing here is uh, in the circles here are dwell locations with the amount of time dwelled. So the darker the red, the longer the time. And these, these tracks here are actually have an interesting rendering pattern. So for the journeys, this is um, a relationship rendering. So the areas that are journey upper left in blue, meaning they're not drastically changing their course, but they have very high speed. So these are those vessels like uh, Maersk or OOCL going from point A to point B to for, for you know, just transiting the area. The areas in this brown were actually fishing vessels, but going from point A to point B to another fishing site. So they have a high speed average, but they change course directly. So they have a over, they're going to one place very fast and then they're changing the direction when they get to the new location. And the areas in this, this orange color right here are areas with uh, low, uh, low speed and high change of speed. So very quickly with this, you can run and find the vessels that are actively fishing versus transiting. And then for the dwell locations, you know, you can pick out the ones and see the one, correspond with that AIS to see whether, uh, uh, where it's been or whether it's just, you know, dwelling that location, it's a, a reefer. So that's uh, using analytics for IoT. Um, and then I'm gonna switch over to Pro here. All these tools are uh, available as in Pro and what we call a GeoAnalytics desktop. So think of it if you don't have a very large amount of data, but you have something that, you know, you can use in Pro. Uh, so analyze patterns, so calculate densities, hotspots, clusters, dwell locations. It could all be run on different spires. So this is about a million and a half records for about a month in, uh, uh, earlier this year. Um, see, there's a lot of information. It just clutters the map. So let's find out, you know, some interesting things here. So we want to summarize in the areas that are want to be avoided. So these are, you know, wildlife uh, restricted areas or military areas. We want to know how many vessels went in that area. So very quickly, we can get an, a summary or a density. So I showed how we can render and see on the fly, but this way you can, you maybe need a product that just shows, here's the counts of vessels that are, are in that area you know, reconstructing our tracks, the reconstructed every track very quickly here. Um, so if you have a vessel of interest and you know it's a repeat offender, or this country's a repeat offender, you can find out where it's been very quickly from the AIS. Uh, dwell locations, this one isn't a, a fishing example, but um, one of my customers wanted to know uh, if they're dwelling in this travel restriction area. So they're going into San Pedro, um, Port of Long Beach, Port, um, port of uh, Los Angeles. So this is an anchorage area here. So you can understand why vessels are, are dwelling here. And this is indicative of what they call a swing circle. So they've anchored and they're going back and forth, but they do have some of them that are outside in the, in the travel lane here. Maybe with the anchorage area was, you know, cluttered with people and or ships rather, um, and they needed to go there, but they're in an active shipping lane right there. Um, and then joins. So this is basically finding out vessels in space and time together. So uh, one thing you want to do is you, you're going to get joins that are, uh, all over the place, right? But you also need to ones to find the ones that are away from shore, right? So, so these are all the ones that were um, uh, joined within one hour of each other at the very, um, <clears throat> very, very close proximity. Obviously, being in port and going slow is a, you know, hey, that's a join, that's okay. But uh, some of them are, you know, in this area here. And I actually found out from one of the uh, my Navy colleagues that this is just a, a transshipment area of fuel. So vessels will come up the coast here, the transshipment fuel, fuel will go into Long Beach and then the one will be going off up to uh, San Francisco. So there's about six ships on a regular basis that just this, this uh, you know, transshipment in this area for about 50 kilometers. And they're going just very slow, like five kilometers an hour. Hey John, so, what, yep. what is the sure. purple uh, line there that goes up there by the, by the islands? Uh, this purple line is a, is a transit shipping scheme from NOAA. Yeah, so this is the, you know, there's an open ocean, but there's also uh, where you need to go when you're getting close to land. So these are the, the Channel Islands National Park. So going back and you know, forth here. And then sometimes the military will have this area um, designated as a, a training range. So that area will be, you know, basically cordoned off when, when that's happening as well. Um, you know, but uh, 
Yeah, that's a, uh, I'm using it from Noah. Another reason why uh, I think the data is available either through RTS online as from Noah as a subscriber or as a, you know, uh, either the living Atlas or as in um, great data from Noah. I, I just bring it in every time. <clears throat> So that's, uh, if you have any questions, that's what I was gonna just show today, just how to bring in AIS data store if you want to and run analysis on that stored data. Mm -hmm.